Warriors visiting the St. Mary's Flying Dutchman. We just had the national anthem, a very nice presentation. Of course, we all talk about what we know tomorrow. So God bless America, everyone within her borders, and Americans all around the world tonight. And we are so happy to be able to stream this to you, thanks to uh, Salter Communications and everyone down the line doing their job. I am Jim, and I'm so happy to be able to do this again. Uh, we'll do our best to bring you the game and keep you up with numerals and uh, names of players. And hopefully it'll be a nice night for football for everybody involved. Flying Dutch taking on the uh, Dubois Beavers. And everybody's marching off the field, taking a little longer now because of the... Uh, the amount of cheerleaders. <laughs> there, there's got to be at least at least 100. And as I mentioned earlier, there, there are beautiful little girls there. Uh, maybe uh, first, second, third graders, all the way up to uh, the senior ladies here tonight cheering. And it's just a great sight. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Jim, this is Friday night at its best. A great crowd, perfect, perfect weather. And, of course, the marching band, the national anthem, the flag is as still as still can possibly be. We actually have a guest in the booth with us. we got Ike Byer up here, the Kersey Kid. He's uh, visiting with us, and uh, he'll be on the air with me tomorrow morning live. I'm uh, Tractor Supply. We're going to be doing a live remote out there. Very excited. They're having their their pet week for us helping out some of the local animal shelters. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, tonight it's all about football, right, Jim? Yes, it is all about football, and uh, what a great night it is. I uh, mentioned earlier this morning we had a pretty gusty breeze across the area, and that's because of beautiful high pressure overhead. As the sun goes down, the atmosphere quits mixing, and then we lose the wind, so it's going to be a fairly calm night, and that's uh, going to allow temperatures to drop. Unlike the first night we were here two Fridays ago, interrupted by thunderstorms and all that heat and humidity, there are people here in sweatshirts and uh, hoodies, so uh, I don't see a lot of shorts out here tonight, even though we're probably right around 66, 67 degrees, but it's going to cool down through the game and overnight tonight. But no threat of rain. Weather will not be a factor in this game. Captains are on the field getting ready to see who's going to receive the toss. And it looks like the Beavers are going to receive the toss, to receive the football, and the Flying Dutchman are going to kick it off. So I'll tell you what, we're going to go to a commercial break real quick here, and then we will be back with the opening kickoff. At Art Heery & Sons Furniture on Arch Street in St. Mary's, we are your headquarters for quality name brand furniture for the entire home. Check out our complete selection of Serta bedding, available in all comfort levels. A full line of flooring, too. Since 1955, Art Heery & Sons Furniture has offered the same great customer service and quality products that keep you coming back. Be sure to visit us on Facebook. Art Heery & Sons Furniture, the furniture store for people in love with their home. After getting our start in the carbon industry, Catalyst has been shaping the products of the future with our powdered metal components for over 65 years. Catalyst now has two sites, one in Gilton, Pennsylvania, and the new one at the St. Mary's Airport Industrial Park. Being family-owned has its benefits when it comes to treating employees with respect. At Catalyst, our culture puts families first. As Catalyst continues to grow, so does our list of employment opportunities. If you'd like to explore becoming a part of the Catalyst family, we invite you to check out... Here we go. Christian Couture kicks the ball off, and a nice return by the Beavers. It was number 28, Benjamin Eric, taking the ball on a bounce, and he brings it on to about the 29-yard uh, line. So the Beavers have decent field position, starting at their own 29-yard line. And they are heading to the right, heading downfield into the sun. That goal at the back. The Flying Dutch have to defend that goal. So uh, the sun is in the eyes, at least for the time being. It's in our eyes anyway, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. What a perfect night for Friday night football, folks. They're down set. They have four receivers, two right, two left. Puts a slot man in motion. Hand off right to the running back and... Oh, the Flying Dutch sniffed that out. He stood up right there. He hits the ground at about the 29-yard line. Austin Mitchell is the starting quarterback for the Dubois area Beavers.
and Landon Schrock is the setback. And he was stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Here we go. Second play. And again, they're going with the same set. Four wide receivers, a half back. He fades back to pass. Deep downfield, and that is at the 40-yard line. Nice play right over the middle. Catch was made by uh, Bryson Dinkfeld. And that's a first down. The clock continues to roll. I'll tell you what, Jim, I sure hope that they uh, keep it on this side of the field until that sun goes down. Yeah. Because they our camera and that quarterback is looking right into the sun. They had that man in motion. He cleared out the, the middle linebacker, and uh, they hit, hit him over the middle. Another man in motion. They fake the handoff, and it goes to the running back. It was a great handoff. No, it goes to the wide receiver crossing, and he gets nowhere. It was handed off to, uh, again, Derek Burkett. For St. Mary's, uh, Chadsey's on the field playing cornerback. We have uh, Ryan Layton out there. He's playing linebacker. Safety is number 33, Logan Mosier. You'll, you'll see these guys on offense as well tonight. From the 38-yard line, there's the snap. There's the throw over the middle, and it's caught again. A nice play by, by uh, Bryson Dingfeld. I hope I'm saying his name right. Bryson Dingfeld over the middle. That's almost a carbon copy of the play that got him the first down earlier. So the ball's on the 49-yard line, or 45-yard line. Very difficult to see looking in the sun. Ball's on the 45 Five to go, third down. They have three receivers left, one flanker to the right, and a lone running back. Shotgun snap, he's back to pass, and he's tackled. He is hit back at the 35-yard line. Nice hit, nice tackle taken down to 35-yard line. I believe that was uh, Caden Selnick. 37 for the Flying Dutch, sacked the quarterback. So uh, Bryson Dingfeld is back to punt. St. Mary's is going to get the ball back, and uh, we'll see what they can do on offense for the first time. There's the snap, the punt. It's a wobbly punt, but it gets a little yardage, and it's out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 32, I believe. So St. Mary's takes over on offense on the 32-yard line. And uh, both teams are changing position here on the field. So two first downs for uh, the the uh, Dubois team, the Beavers. And St. Mary's going to take over. And Mr. Couture is on the field. Number 14, Kristen Couture, the quarterback. He's out there with uh, Dustin, Justin Dornish, the running back. And they have four receivers on the field. The handoff to Dornish. He cuts around the right end. He gets positive yardage. He's out to about the 40-yard line. So a nice positive gain on first down. So it's going to be second down. Ball's on the 32-yard line. Two yards to go for the first down. What a perfect night. Yeah. Wow. And all those 200 cheerleaders that were on the field, and they're down front cheering for the team. That's beautiful. Beautiful sight, little ones and older ones. Okay, we have that uh, four wide receiver set, lone halfback. They hand it off again to the halfback. And he's got some good moves. He's around the end. He's out to about the 45-yard line. That's uh, Justin Dornish again. So he's picked up close to 15, 16 yards. And that's a first down. First and 10, balls on the 45-yard line. Looks like the same personnel. Couture, the quarterback. Dornish is the running back. Three receivers now to the far side, one to the left. Receiver is going, he's going deep. Beautiful catch. That is a catch. Over the shoulder, quarterback Couture led the receiver perfectly and threw the ball over the inside shoulder. 
And that catch was made by uh, Colin Ritz. Colin Ritz, number nine. That takes the ball well down the field. First and 10 from the 15 yard line. So another first down, a long pass. Third first down of the series for the Flying Dutch. And again, we go with a man in motion coming from the wide side and they'll run it right up the middle and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Justin Dornish gets back to the line of scrimmage. So it's second and 10, ball still marked on the 15 yard line. <laughs> Play caught down to 30 seconds, everybody's set, ready to go. Four receivers set and a lone running back. Here's the snap to the running back. They try up the middle again and no way. He hits the ground and he may have lost a yard or two. So the Beavers' staunch defense is really stopping the run game, at least up the middle. Seems like their best chance at running the football is around to the outside, cutting around the ends. So it's third and 10, ball is on the 15. They mark him right back at the line of scrimmage. The original line of scrimmage. Kudere gets the play from the sideline. Dornish, the running back. This time they have three receivers set to the left and one flanker right, and they are going to the left. They flush him. Kudere is on the run, and he is dropped. dropped Tripped him up. He's dropped at about the 19-yard line. So it's fourth and ten. If he'd have got away, Jim, he had some he had some room. He had some room. He just caught him by the ankles and dropped him for a loss. So it's fourth and fourteen. And they're going for it. There's the snap. Fake the handoff to Dorsich over the middle. Oh, almost picked off at the goal line, but it's Looks like it, there could have been interference called on that play. The intended receiver was Carter Chatsy, but there is no flag on the play. And uh, a little bit of chattering in the press box yeah. next to us there. But the Beavers take over on downs. But, um, that play happened so fast. There was a collision down there. The sun is on the scoreboard, and it looks like 533 left in the first quarter here. No score. Flying Dutch mustered up uh, three first downs on their first possession. Now the Beavers have the ball back. They have two running backs in the backfield. That's a different look. They hand off to a running back. He cuts around, and there's a flag on the play, and he may have picked up a yard or two. And that's really about it. Ball was handed off to... Uh, Austin Henry, number 36. So they'll regroup, talk it over, and it's uh, second and 10. The ball on the 19-yard line. We'll see what the flag is all about here. Looks like a hold on the offense. So they'll march them back. Closer and closer to the shadow of their old their own goal line here. So uh, there's a 10 yard penalty. Ball's on the nine yard line. Austin Mitchell, the quarterback, checks his uh, sleeve for the play, and the snap is off, but the whistles go and the play is dead. Snap is off and the whistle is on. It's not the play clock. It stopped at 16 seconds. Let's see what they call here. Time back in, 20 seconds on the play clock. The ball is still on the nine yard line. First and 20, there's the snap. And it's a run play. 
That's uh, Braxton Adams, number 15. And he picks up a couple of yards. It's uh, second and 16, balls on the 14 yard line. And the cheerleaders seem very happy. Running clock, 435 to go in the first quarter. They're down and set, two receivers left and right, one lone running back, quarterback takes the ball, he's passing all the way. Oh, and it's just off the fingertips, just off the fingertips of, uh, of uh, Derek Burkett, the intended wide receiver. He flared out of the backfield and just couldn't hold it in. So third and 15. And if we can't convert a first down here, it's uh, likely that the Dutch are gonna have decent field position after the punt. See if they can hold them. Everybody's getting on the same page, checking their, their armbands. Three receivers to the right, heavy to the right side, and that's, uh, whoa, it's a quarterback sneak. It's a keeper. It's a keeper. Do they get him? Oh, they got him just before he hit the first down mark. <laughs> he got out to about the 28, 29 yard line. He actually ran over the first down yeah. marker. They're going to give him the first down? That's the far side of the field here. The scoreboard has not changed. It still reached third and 15. So it looks like it's fourth and a yard. They just may end up going for it here. Fourth and a yard. We haven't seen uh, the officials confirm that just yet. If the ball's on the 29-yard line. Beautiful night here. Temperature in the 60s. Folks are in sweatshirts and hoodies, and that's the way football should be. There's an official timeout on the field, and they're still talking things over here. They're bringing in the sticks to measure it and make sure. As it stands, it's third and 15, but that's not taking into consideration the quarterback's run. And it looks like there's a, lot, there's a lot of room in that chain. Did he get it? First down. He got a first there down. You go. He just by the nose of the football. Exciting football. So Austin Mitchell ran for the first down. It's first and 10. The ball's on the 29-yard line, and they escape a, a huge bullet there with having to punt from back deep in their own zone. They would have been punting from their own red zone. So that's a first down, and play continues with the Dubois Beavers on offense and the Flying Dutch. Have to tighten things up here to keep them from getting a little closer to midfield. Nice crowd here, Jim, on oh, a perfect yeah, fantastic night. Fantastic here. Okay, both teams are down. The linemen are set. You got uh, quarterback. Running back in the uh, I formation, halfback and fullback. You got two wide receivers, like a pro set, and they give it to the tailback. And he picks up about three, four yards, right up the middle. A couple of yards picked up by uh, Braxton Adams. He comes out. He's replaced by uh, Dalton Yale. Dalton Yale now in the backfield, along with... Uh, Austin Henry. Bryson uh, Dinkfeld is one receiver. Derek Burkett is another. There's the snap. It's right into the belly of the running back, and he's stacked up at the 30-yard line. Goes nowhere. Nice play by the heart of the Dutchman defense. The defensive tackle stacked him up, and the linebackers came in and cleaned him up. So it's third and nine, and we're facing a long way to go here for the the Beavers. <coughs> yeah, but they were third and 15 on the yeah, last they were. Side. They were. They've got to make nine yards to keep the football. <clears throat> Three receivers to the right. He goes to the far side, the flanker, the lone flanker who gets a first down and more. He's out to the 50, the 45. About the 42-yard line, so they did it again. They moved the ball on a third and nine. They pick up at least 30, 35 yards on that play. Uh-oh. <laughs> I 
Their fermented computer went dead. I thought, uh oh, Jim, I thought, here we go. We don't need that. <laughs> yeah, beautiful play. There were three to the right, one flanker to the left. He faked to the right, went to the wide open flanker who took it at least 35 yards. And here we are, first and 10 on the Dutch 42 yard line. So uh, another nice, another nice uh, run and pass. They're mixing it up really well. There's a broken play. Quarterback was going to hand it off to uh, Braxton Adams, but he ended up keeping the football and making some part of positive yardage out of it. The football is, uh, has been moved down to about the 32-yard line. 31, 32-yard line. So positive yardage on a broken play. Lucky that didn't end in a fumble. That was a good job by the Beavers to pull that off. Austin Mitchell goes to the sidelines to hear what the coach has to say. Back out. Calls everybody to the huddle. Flying Dutch are back on defense. They're ready to go. They're going with uh, three down line, four down linemen playing the gap so the linebackers can penetrate. And uh, they whistle that play dead. 139 left in quarter number one, and there is no score between the St. Mary's Flying Dutchman and the Dubois Beavers and a beautiful night in St. Mary's. Okay, that penalty was against the Beavers and they're walking that ball back. So it's first and 15, that was a five yard penalty. The ball is at the 36 yard line. A minute and a half, more or less, to go in first quarter. Play clock down to 15. They're still getting set. Two running backs, two receivers to the right, one to the left. And a nice pass out to the right to number 17. That's Derek Burkett. He takes the ball down to about the 20-yard line. So the Beavers now starting to move the ball with some pretty good frequency here. First and 10 from the 20, and they are now deeper into Flying Dutchman territory. Play clock is running down to 15. Everybody is set now. Got a man in motion. He, he stays in the block. He turns into the line ahead of number 15, who a gets flag the ball. on the play, Jim. Nice flag on the play. Adam Braxton makes positive yardage there, but will it be coming back? They threw it into the line, which is probably a hold. So we get the horrible hanky on the field. Yeah, and they're marching it back. That's a 10-yarder. But again, the Beavers have had good luck converting on long downs. The first and 15 and a, and with a nine yarder to go. And now it's uh, first and 10, 29 yard line. First and 20, excuse me, on the, on the 29 yard line. There's the snap. He goes back to pass. There's no doubt about it. He rolls to the right. He's over the line of scrimmage. It's a keeper, and he gets the first down. Runs out of bounds right at the sticks. So it's another first down. Another first down for the Beavers. 26.4 seconds to go in the first half. The clock is stopped on that so they can move the down markers, of course, and uh, see if they can punch it in while they're working their way into the sunset. Thank you for watching. We're streaming the video from Salters Communications, and it's a pleasure to be with you on a Friday night. They're set for the snap. Two running backs, quarterback uh, fakes to the running back, rolls to the right, and hits a receiver crossing. Crossing, he turns upfield, and oh, just before the pylon. He's out of bounds at about the three-yard line. Bryson Dickfeld had the catch, caught the ball at the end of the line, just turned it upfield, and just ran out of real estate before hitting the pylon. 
Ball's on the two-yard line, first and two, first and goal. Derek Burkert comes in. He's bringing in the new play. Everybody's huddling up. St. Mary's looks like they're ready to defend their goal on the goal line. So the center, Zach Gallagher, over the ball. And this time, quarterback's under center. He keeps it, and the pile pushes him across the line, so it's a touchdown. 9.4 seconds to go, and it's a touchdown for the Beavers. Austin Mitchell on the keeper scores the touchdown. Lining up to kick. There's placement. The kick is up and it's good. So nine seconds to go in the first quarter and the Beavers draw first blood. Seven nothing on a goal line touchdown run from Austin Mitchell. Number six. Say so marks the ball up the field with uh, five first downs. Very impressive drive. Five first downs. There were they mixed the run and pass plays up. So St. Mary's will have the shot now as we head into the second quarter. Look at the kickoff. Off and then uh, they'll switch sides of the field for the change of quarter. We thank you very much for watching us online here. Salter Communications helping to bring the game. Jeff Buhite, I'm Jim, and nothing better than high school football on a Friday night. That sun has gone down. It makes it a little easier to... <laughs> yeah, you can see the scoreboard now. <laughs> yeah. The referee hands the uh, kick of the ball and kind of points that way, like you need to kick it that way. Charlie Harmon will kick the ball to the St. Mary's team. And they have uh, three men deep. Kind of a squib it's kick. a squib kick, and that's, whoop, oh, fumble. He drops He's it. on it. He's on it. He picks it up. He'll make something positive out of it as we end the quarter. And that was for the St. Mary's Flying Dutchman, Logan Moser. We got 1.3 seconds left in the first quarter. We'll get one more play. Okay, I'm going to snap the ball. Man in motion. Man in motion was Tony Lewis. He's flanked out to the left side. We have two to the right. Shotgun, there's the snap. Hands off to the running back who cuts up the middle and maybe gets a yard or two. That's uh, Justin Dornish, the running back. So that's the end of the first quarter with the visitors, the Dubois Beavers leading our uh, Flying Dutchman, 7-0. Serving our area since 1934, Cotter's has gained the trust of numerous friends in St. Mary's, Kersey, Johnsonburg, Ridgeway, Kane, Brockway, and Emporium. Our sales staff is here to help you find your next SUV, car, or truck. We'll help walk you through the process with no pressure, no haggling. Cotter's Service Department has over 90 years of combined service experience. Cotter's, locally owned and operated since 1934. 
And we're back here live, folks, on a beautiful Friday night from Dutch Country Stadium. Our Dutchmen are down 7 nothing to the visiting Dubois Beavers getting ready for the start of the second quarter. Jim, to you. Well, it's a second and 10 to go on the 24-yard line. We swapped ends of the quarter, and the Flying Dutch back on offense, and here we go. The ball's on the 24-yard line. We've got a man in motion. Here's the pitch. It's a screen. Screen pass, he's thrown to the right side, and he gets uh, about five, six yards on that deal. That was a screen pass to uh, Logan Mosier. Nice catch and run. That's positive yardage. Any time you get away from your old goal line, that's, that's a good thing. You know, when I started uh, thinking about doing football again, it dawned on me. Back in high school when I played, I was a linebacker fullback. <laughs> and we, we, it was a running game. Now... Three, four wide receiver sets. That's the way the game is, not just in high school, but the pro game as well. We have four receivers on the field, two right, two left, one running back. Quarterback about a step and a half behind him. And here we go. The center set. Moser in motion. Oh, a nice play. That was a really nice timing play, and it goes for about a yard or two. Quarterback took the snap, didn't have it more than a nanosecond. He flipped it forward to the guy crossing in front of him, and he takes it for two yards. Of course, Jim, this is a big weekend in football. You know, tonight we got high school. Tomorrow we got Penn State, Pitt. And then, of course, Sunday we got our, uh, our Steelers start off the season. And the Steelers and Buffalo. So uh, there's a big fan base That's here for the Buffalo Bills. That's a great, way to, start That's a great a way to start it out. Second and 12 balls on the 32-yard line. Three receivers set to the right, and that's the way Kudere's going wide open. A nice acrobatic catch. Beautiful catch by Tony Lewis. He had a stretch up over his head, twist in the air, and come down with the ball, and he got more positive yardage after the run. That's at least, that's at least a 30, 35-yard gain. Ball comes out to the... Uh, 40-yard line, so Flying Dutch are now in Beaver territory. First and 10 from the 40. Beautiful pass play. And the ball, oop, there's a flag on the play. The ball was handed to uh, Justin Dornish. He slips down, but there was a flag before he hit the ground, so. We'll see what this is. Temperatures starting to drift back down to the lower 60s and maybe in the upper 50s. And the grass is starting to get a little wet, I would imagine. The dew is starting to set in. They marched the ball back. It was a hold on uh, St. Mary's, the Flying Dutch. We are at the 50-yard line. So right at midfield and the Dutch heading to the western end zone. Okay, there's the whistle. The clock starts with 10.56 to go in the half. Center's ready. Shotgun position. The ball snapped, and it's a pass play. Kuderay's looking downfield, has all the time in the world. Now he starts to scramble. He's moving to the right, and he will maybe get a yard or two before he's stacked up at the 49-yard line. He had all the time in the world. It looked like Tom Brady back there. Yeah, he had all the time in the world to... Uh, to figure out where to go with it. Then he tucked it and ran and got a couple of yards out of it. Everybody was covered well by the secondary. Beavers played a tight defense. So we have Dornish in the backfield, Kuderay the quarterback, three receivers set to the left, one to the right. And he's looking to go to over the middle. Oh, oh just tipped, tipped. Yeah, but just tipped, just out of the reach of Tony Lewis and the ball falls incomplete in midfield. And boy, Jim, you know, we talk about weather. Remember two weeks ago we were here doing this and now uh, had a water bag up here and an ice bag. And yeah. tonight we need a sweatshirt. Need a sweatshirt. Welcome to Pennsylvania, folks. Beautiful weather here in the PA Mountains, the Pennsylvania Wilds. No better place to be for my money. There's the snap back to Goudere. He throws long, going left, and he has 
Oh. Broken up. No, it's an interception. They're calling that an interception. Yeah, I wasn't sure if he caught it or not, but I believe he did. It was almost like over his shoulder. Yeah, Tony Lewis at the, was the intended receiver at the far sideline, and I believe the defensive back was... Um, Got to get a number on him. I think it was uh, Derek Burkett. Or Burkett. He went back and he picked it off. So... The drive is nipped, 9.55 in the half. It's first and 10 on the 25, and the Beavers take over, the black and orange. Caden Delaney is in at one receiver. Is that Delancey? I'm sorry, Cheney, uh, Caden Delancey. Kind of hard to read the type up here in the dark booth. Quarterback takes a snap, and it's handed to the back, up the middle, and a cloud of dust and a cloud of dirt, and he gets maybe three yards out of the play. Three yards and a splash. Mm -hmm. So it's a second and nine, ball on the 26. Thank you. <clears throat> Are you mighty Jim up here? We got some water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wet my whistle now and then. <clears throat> All these computers and cameras, I'm afraid to have a bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep, I keep it well out of my way. I'm the master of disaster. <laughs> I don't want to have to explain that to yeah. <laughs> Johnny Marks. I don't either. Your computer was drowned. They're taking their time out there. It looks like they're looking at instant replay of the interception, but that's not the case. Play clock down to five seconds. There's the snap. Beavers, the quarterback keeps it. He goes right up the middle, and he's tripped up at the 30-yard line. Give Austin a shout Mitchell out. Keeps the, keeps the ball and runs. Give a shout out to my good friend, former uh, Elk County Commissioner Dan Freeberg. Hope you're listening tonight, Dan. Got a nice compliment from him the, uh, after the last game. Hope you're listening. Hope you're in, everything is in good health. Okay, there's the snap. Here's the punt. It's a low punt. It takes a nice bounce, and it's fielded on the bounce. He reverses field, and oh, he's dropped it about the 40-yard line. Nice effort by uh, Logan Moser. That was a textbook tackle, how he yeah. got his arms around him and took him down. Wrapped him and took him down. You know, it really bothers me in the NFL when you see these defensive backs just throwing a shoulder at people's legs. I mean, you know, tackle. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things about the NFL is it's not what it used to be when it uh -huh. come with back in the 70s, the steel curtain. And Flying Dutch, uh, shotgun snap. Kudere faked a pass. He did a pump and he handed it off to the running back. And uh, Justin Dornich maybe picked up uh, picked up one or two yards on the play. Ball's on the 42 now. Okay, we have a heavy to the left, so a slot receiver, a tight end, and a far, far receiver. But oh, not good. <laughs> I really thought the quarterback was nailed up, but he got it away. Forty-nine yard line, third and one. Kind of fake shot a little there, yeah, didn't he? I saw the quarterback <laughs> getting hit, and I didn't see where the ball went. There's the snap, the handoff. He fumbles it. Oh, oh. If the play stands, the fumble was recovered by the Beavers, picked up by uh, their number 10, Bryson, uh, Bryson uh, Dingfeld.
So there we are. Ball was put on the ground, recovered by Dubois. Score seven nothing. Dubois Beavers lead the Flying Dutchman. 7.09 in the first half. And the Beavers back on offense. Here we go. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Single back in the backfield. Mitchell back to pass, and oh, he gets nowhere. He's He was slowed down until the rest of the defense got there and took him under. So Austin Mitchell loses yardage. Good defense by the Flying Dutchman. The ball's back on the 46-yard line. It's now second and a long 17 for Dubois. Play clock at 15. They're looking at the sideline for a little help. Gets the play. Austin Mitchell talks to his fullback or his running back. He got two wide right, one to the left. Lone back, and it's a pass play. He's rolling to the right, and it's deflected. Incomplete. Hit at the line of scrimmage and deflected. So the Beavers, who had moved the ball fairly well in this game, run into a, a flying Dutch stone wall. Third and 17. And they spread the field. They got two wides to the left, two to the right. A lone running back. Linebackers are bunched in the middle. And, and we get a timeout. Seven nothing new boys, six fifteen in the second quarter. Well, they're marching it back. Yeah, they're Jim. marching it back. I didn't see the flag on the field. I didn't either. So it's third and 22. The ball's on the 41 now. You know, though, the Dubois Beavers have a couple times have been really deep on third down and managed to. And managed to come out. Come out of it. And they use the sidelines well. Runs up the middle and uh, passes down the sidelines. There's the snap. It's a fumbled snap. And there's another flag in there. But if everything goes according to plan, the Flying Dutchmen have the ball. I know that referee had his hand out and did a 360 spin, so I'm not quite sure which yeah. way. But I think they are giving it to the, the Dutch. Flying Dutch. So uh, in this quarter, we had two fumbles, one by each team. The Flying Dutch have the ball, first and 10 from the 39-yard line, and they're they're passing deep, and they get him wide open. He's wide open. What a catch. Yes. Caught him sleeping. That's a touchdown. Flying Dutch just put six on the board. He was wide open I didn't down catch there. the number. I'm trying to catch the number. I think he got him right on the goal line, Jim. He didn't right score yet. Line. That was Braden Osti, I believe, that made that great catch. He ran over the pylon at the end of the goal line, but they didn't give it to him. No, he's probably down just short. And the ball is on the one yard line. They got a full house backfield now. They run the play, and they're not signaling touchdown yet. Looks like the ball is still just shy of the goal line. 5.42 to go, first half. They may run a sweep here. They couldn't get it up the middle. There's a pass play, wide open, wide open on the right side. It was number 33, 
Logan Moser. Logan Moser scores the touchdown. There wasn't much up the middle, so he rolls right, passes right, and he was wide open in the near corner of the end zone. So it's 7-6 in favor of the Beavers, and we'll see what happens here. Couture is going to kick. Ryan Layton will do the holding. Ball's down. Oh, no. Oh, almost. That was a trick play. Fantastic. The, the snap was uh, picked up by the holder who flipped it to Couture. Couture rolled to the right. He had a receiver in the end zone just a little out of his reach. They went for two, so the score now 7-6, still in favor of uh, Dubois over St. Mary's at 5-22 in the second quarter. We'll take a quick... Throughout West Central Pennsylvania, people are losing their glasses. Well, they haven't really lost them. They just don't need them anymore. Thanks to the amazing LASIK surgeons at Laurel Eye Clinic. Using state-of-the-art bladeless LASIK technology, these board-certified surgeons offer better vision for you and your family. With 10 convenient locations, there's bound to be one nearby. Isn't it time that you lost your glasses? Call Laurel Eye Clinic or visit laureleye.com and schedule your free consultation. Back here live at Dutch Country Stadium. Get back on the field after a uh, touchdown. 7-6, Dubois Beavers with 5.22 remaining. Jim, as the sun goes down, the lights are on. Beautiful night. Little chunk of a moon up there. I love autumn. Autumn and winter are my time of year. So, Won't be long. I'll be crawling up in a tree to <laughs> yeah. chase after them white tails. Couture set to kick off from the 40-yard line. 522 left in the first half. It's a squib kick, high bounce, and it's fielded cleanly. Taken up the middle to about the 33-yard uh, line. A nice return by Derek Burkett. Nice return. So the Beaver come back on the field. We'll take over on offense. We'll see what they can do with uh, five minutes and change in the first half. There's such a great crowd on hand. The far side of the field, the Dubois side, a lot of people made the trip up to St. Mary's. And, of course, uh, we're just looking at a lot of happy folks here sitting in the stands. It's cheerleader night by the looks of things, all the little ones out there. So we're down. We're set to go. Two receivers left, one to the right. You got a man in motion. And they go pretty much off tackle with that run and maybe pick up five yards to the right. That was Austin Henry on the carry. So it's second and seven from the 35 yard line of the, the Beavers. We come back up to the line. Quarterback talking to his running back. Four receivers, one in motion. Number 10 comes to the line. And he'll provide blocking up the middle, but it's a pass play, a misdirection, and well, the ball was intended for uh, Bryson Dinkfeld, but just fell incomplete. <clears throat> so they're marching it back a little bit here. So it's not second and seven anymore. They're placing the ball on the 24 yard line. They've got uh, to make at least the 42 to get a first down. Second and 18 to go. 
Fades back to pass, throws over the middle, and he connects with his fullback, or his running back, who gets hit right away. Austin Henry. St. Mary's has a tall secondary. Colin Reitz is out there. He's 6'2". Uh, we've got uh, Caden out there. He's uh, he's well over six feet tall. So. You to pass on, try to pass on St. Mary's. You got to get it over some tall defensive backs. It's a little screen pass out to the right, and that goes for positive yardage. He doesn't want to go down, and finally it takes two or three people to put him down. That was uh, Cameron Hayes. Cameron Hayes on the carry. Cameron Hayes getting a carry here, and he uh, he was a tough man to bring down. Three thirty-one to go. Seven-six. Your score in favor of Du Bois. So it's fourth and seven. Two teams are huddling up on their respective sidelines. And Du Bois is going to punt it back to the St. Mary's Flying Dutchman. Garrett Nessel is their punter. Nice snap, big kick, nice leg on that guy. Nice punt, filled it directly. He fakes the pitch. Beautiful run back, almost to midfield, not quite. That was uh, Carter Chatsey. Carter Chatsey filled it that punt. He brought it back. And they're marking it at the 45, 44 yard line. So St. Mary's takes over the ball with 3.21 to go in the half. Decent field position just on uh, their side of the 50-yard line. Ready to center the ball. Four receivers. you got a man in motion. There's the snap and a whistle. Play blown dead. So they move the ball back again. It's first and 15. Ball goes to the 44-yard line with 3.21 to play. Looked like that play was about ready to work, too, so uh, we'll have to see if they try that again. This time you got three receivers stacked on the left side, one to the right. A running back, there's the snap, it's low, but there's the pitch to the running back, and he takes it around the end and gets back to about the 40, 38, 39 yard line. Justin Dornich getting the workload at running back tonight for St. Mary's. Try it again. Second and 16, balls on the 38. Three receivers set to the right this time. There's the snap. A screen pass. And that's uh, smelled out rather quickly. Caught up to him from behind, yeah. Jim. Dalton Steele, number 26. <laughs> we 
We've got the snap and a long pass. Just, oh, what a play by the defensive back. That was a fantastic play. That ball had seven points, six points written all over it. The pass was meant for St. Mary's uh, Charlie Coudere, and it was broken up beautifully. Broken up downfield by Garrett Franz. He was with him step by step. So with 151 to go, the Flying Dutchman punt the ball back to Dubois. A high punt snap, but oh, he's running the football. I don't know if that was planned or not. There's flags all over the field. It was a high snap. The punter went up to get it. And then he ran it. And he ran it. <laughs> It was Tony. Uh, Braden Osti was the guy that uh, brought that back. So, Dubois catches a large break, large break here with that. Blown punt play, and they have the ball at the 39-yard uh, line of the Flying Dutch with 1.44 to go. They have a little clock to play with. They have to be efficient here to punch it in. Back in motion. They hand it off and goes nowhere. So the defense up to the task. Defense shut down the run play by uh, Braxton Adams. So it's second and 11. Ball's right at the 40 yard line. Clock's running, 120 to go. Pass over the middle and it's broken up. St. Mary's taking no chances. That ball hit the ground and one of the offensive linemen got right on top of it. The defensive lineman, that is. I believe that was Carter Price who jumped on the ball. So you got a lot of single digits out there, fast receivers. They still put that man in motion, quarterback keeper, and he goes up the middle. It's out to about the 35-yard line, 34-yard line. And we are under a minute to go in the first half. Clock is running. Neither team seems to be in much of a hurry to do anything here with the time remaining. So the Beavers come up to the line. You got three linebackers across the middle. The safeties are now backing out, and we get a flag. Clock stops with 36.7 seconds. And that would be against the Dutch. They're moving the ball closer to the goal line. Looks like they're marching it down to the 29-yard line. Do not need that with only 36 seconds to go. First and 10 ball on the 29 yard line. Play clock with 20 seconds to go. And of course, uh, 36 seconds left. The clock will start with the snap. And here it is. He backs out, he's going to pass all the way. Deep pass, but he throws into coverage, and it's picked off. The Dutch pick it off for a touchback. One receiver was covered by the corner and the safety. A beautiful play to pick the ball off. The ball was picked off by our number nine, that's Colin Reitz. Colin Reitz with the interception. So the Flying Dutch dodged a cannonball over their bow here with uh, less than 30 seconds to go in the first half. 
They get the ball back on a touchback, and the ball's on the 10-yard line, the 20-yard line, first and 10 from the 20. And we're back to pass over the middle. Oh, just out of the hands of, uh, just out of the hands of a Carter Chatsy. Looks like he's uh, shaken up on the plays, holding his ankle a little bit here, but just out of his reach. St. Mary's trying a quick strike here, trying to stun them here with uh, 24 seconds left in the first half. So with a little bit of a break here as we see what's up with the ankle of Carter Chadsey. We're going to go to break, Jim. In your door, a fold in your fender will fix them up right where the accident mender will make your car the good as new St. Mary's Auto Body. Our guys are the tops with the accident pros. Everybody in St. Mary's knows where the place to go for car crash woes. St. Mary's Auto Body. We make new friends by and we're back here live as Carter gets up and pretty much walks off the field on his own, which is always a good thing. Yeah, he bounced up. Looks like he maybe stunned his ankle a little bit there, but he tweaked he's it a little bit. Off. 24 seconds to go. It's 7 6 in favor of uh, Du Bois. Flying Dutch, just a beautiful pickoff in the end zone for a touchback minutes ago. Couldn't play defense better than they did with the safety in the corner pinching in on the receiver. He had nowhere to go, and it was picked off. And so the clock will start on the snap. Quarterback, three wides to the right, one to the left. Safety valve is the running back, and they flip it out to him. And he's down at about the 22-yard line. Justin Dornich on the catch and run. Thirteen seconds to go. Until the half, both teams will head to their respective locker rooms and try to figure a few things out, try to solve each other's defense a bit more. We had two turnovers, one apiece. A couple of interceptions. Yeah, a couple of pickoffs. A couple of beautiful pass plays down, to the, down the sidelines. Where St. Mary's lined up to kick an extra point, but uh, instead went for two. A nifty little move by the holder, flipped it to Couture, and uh, he passed it into the end zone just out of the reach of his receiver. So we stand at 7 6, probably going into the half, unless something drastic happens here. I think they may take a knee, but you never know. <clears throat> Snap to the running back, direct snap. And he's out of bounds. And the clock is running down 2-0. And that's it for the first half. The score, Dubois 7, the Flying Dutch 6. We'll be back with second half action coming up. This isn't funny. Unlike other insurance commercials, they spend millions to make you laugh. But if you need seriously good insurance for your car, your home, your business, your life, this could be your favorite commercial ever. Seriously good insurance. Steve Straub at the Straub Insurance Agency. Call 834-2490. In Emporium, call 
Some of my favorite memories are set in the warm summer sun. These memories are so important to protect, just like my family. You can find that protection with St. Mary's Insurance Agency. Affordable protection and superior service from Erie Insurance. Auto, home, business, and life. Your Erie agent is waiting for you. Call St. Mary's Insurance Agency for a quote today. 814-834-2897. Welcome to Catalyst. We're the company in the new building at the St. Mary's Airport Industrial Park. For over 65 years, the key to our success has been our people. At Catalyst, we pride ourselves in creating and maintaining a culture where family comes first, where people enjoy working, and where we get to know each other on a first-name basis. Catalyst is growing, and that means so are the opportunities for employment. If you'd like to join the Catalyst family, we invite you to check out our website at CatalystCorp.com. At Art Heery & Sons Furniture on Art Street in St. Mary's, we are your headquarters for quality name brand furniture for the entire home. Check out our complete selection of Serta bedding, available in all comfort levels. A full line of flooring, too. Since 1955, Art Heery & Sons Furniture has offered the same great customer service and quality products that keep you coming back. Be sure to visit us on Facebook. Art Heery & Sons. After getting our start in the carbon industry, Catalyst has been shaping the products of the future with our powdered metal components for over 65 years. Catalyst now has two sites, one in Gilton, Pennsylvania, and the new one at the St. Mary's Airport Industrial Park. Being family-owned has its benefits when it comes to treating employees with respect. At Catalyst, our culture puts families first. As Catalyst continues to grow, so does our list of employment opportunities. If you'd like to explore becoming a part of the Catalyst family, we invite you to check out our website at Catalyst Corp. Serving our area since 1934, Cotter's has gained the trust of numerous friends in St. Mary's, Kersey, Johnsonburg, Ridgeway, Kane, Brockway, and Emporium. Our sales staff is here to help you find your next SUV, car, or truck. We'll help walk you through the process with no pressure, no haggling. Cotter's Service Department has over 90 years of combined service experience. Cotter's, locally owned and operated since 1934. Throughout West Central Pennsylvania, people are losing their glasses. Well, they haven't really lost them. They just don't need them anymore. Thanks to the amazing LASIK surgeons at Laurel Eye Clinic. Using state-of-the-art bladeless LASIK technology, these board-certified surgeons offer better vision for you and your family. With 10 convenient locations, there's bound to be one nearby. Isn't it time that you lost your glasses? Call Laurel Eye Clinic or visit laureleye.com and schedule your free consultation. This isn't funny. Unlike other insurance commercials, they spend millions to make you laugh. But if you need seriously good insurance for your car, your home, your business, your life, this could be your favorite commercial ever. Seriously good insurance. Steve Straub at the Straub Insurance Agency. Call 834-2490. In Emporium, call 
up. I'm going to be quiet now. We've got a beautiful look at the band coming up. Welcome back, everybody. Flying Dutch Country Stadium, and we are uh, at halftime. 7-6 the score. Dubois leads. 6-6 uh, uh, the score for St. Mary's. They tried a, an extra point, turned it into a two-point conversion that just fell incomplete. Uh, both teams playing even up. Flying Dutch has uh, six first downs and Dubois eight. We'll be back with second half action, but I'm going to be quiet now. We've got to listen to the band. The band needs some air time. So here is the Flying Dutch band. Some of my favorite memories are set in the warm summer sun. These memories are so important to protect, just like my family. 
You can find that protection with St. Mary's Insurance Agency. Affordable protection and superior service from Erie Insurance. Auto, home, business, and life. Your Erie agent is waiting for you. Call St. Mary's Insurance Agency for a quote today. 814-834-2897. Welcome to Catalyst. We're the company in the new building at the St. Mary's Airport Industrial Park. For over 65 years, the key to our success has been our people. At Catalyst, we pride ourselves in creating and maintaining a culture where family comes first, where people enjoy working, and where we get to know each other on a first-name basis. Catalyst is growing, and that means so are the opportunities for employment. If you'd like to join the Catalyst family, we invite you to check out our website at CatalystCorp.com. At Art Heery & Sons Furniture on Art Street in St. Mary's, we are your headquarters for quality name brand furniture for the entire home. Check out our complete selection of Serta bedding, available in all comfort levels. A full line of flooring, too. Since 1955, Art Heery & Sons Furniture has offered the same great customer service and quality products that keep you coming back. Be sure to visit us on Facebook. Art Heery & Sons Furniture, the furniture store for people in love with their homes. After getting our start in the carbon industry, Catalyst has been shaping the products of the future with our powdered metal components for over 65 years. Catalyst now has two sites, one in Gilton, Pennsylvania, and the new one at the St. Mary's Airport Industrial Park. Being family-owned has its benefits when it comes to treating employees with respect. At Catalyst, our culture puts families first. As Catalyst continues to grow, so does our list of employment opportunities. If you'd like to explore becoming a part of the Catalyst family, we invite you to check out our website at Catalyst. Serving our area since 1934, Cotter's has gained the trust of numerous friends in St. Mary's, Kersey, Johnsonburg, Ridgeway, Kane, Brockway, and Emporium. Our sales staff is here to help you find your next SUV, car, or truck. We'll help walk you through the process with no pressure, no haggling. Cotter's Service Department has over 90 years of combined service experience. Cotter's, locally owned and operated since 1934. Throughout West Central Pennsylvania, people are losing their glasses. Well, they haven't really lost them. They just don't need them anymore. Thanks to the amazing LASIK surgeons at Laurel Eye Clinic. Using state-of-the-art bladeless LASIK technology, these board-certified surgeons offer better vision for you and your family. With 10 convenient locations, there's bound to be one nearby. Isn't it time that you lost your glasses? Call Laurel Eye Clinic or visit laureleye.com and schedule your this isn't funny. Unlike other insurance commercials, they spend millions to make you laugh. But if you need seriously good insurance for your car, your home, your business, your life, this could be your favorite commercial ever. Seriously good insurance. Steve Straub at the Straub Insurance Agency. Call 834-2490. In Emporium, call 
Some of my favorite memories are set in the warm summer sun. These memories are so important to protect, just like my family. You can find that protection with St. Mary's Insurance Agency. Affordable protection and superior service from Miri Insurance. Auto, home, business, and life. Your Erie agent is waiting for you. Call St. Mary's Insurance Agency for a quote today. 814-834-2897. Welcome to Catalyst. We're the company in the new building at the St. Mary's Airport Industrial Park. For over 65 years, the key to our success has been our people. At Catalyst, we pride ourselves in creating and maintaining a culture where family comes first, where people enjoy working, and where we get to know each other on a first-name basis. Catalyst is growing, and that means so are the opportunities for employment. If you'd like to join the Catalyst family, we invite you to check out our website at catalystcorp.com. Stadium with a score 7 6 in favor of Dubois, and uh, both teams are back on the respective sidelines right now. I hope you had a chance to enjoy the the halftime. I've never seen that before. There were four xylophones, an electric piano, and the band out there. And just a beautiful job, beautiful singer. And a, a soloist. Nice. It was a soloist. It was really, really a beautiful halftime show, thanks to the St. Mary's marching band and all those good musicians. Well, the clock is reset at 12 minutes, and again, 7-6. This game can go to anybody at this point in time, and both teams are playing evenly matched. Pretty close in first downs. Eight for the Beavers and six for the Flying Dutchman. And ready to take the field, and it's going to be the Flying Dutchman receiving the second half kickoff. You know, it's some interesting, Jim. The first game you and I did, St. Mary's versus Ridgeway, there was no turnovers. No, there wasn't. And it was soaking wet it out. It was a wet, wet game. Tonight, it's dry as a bone, and we've had... We had one player slip. Yeah. That's really the only thing I, I could say about a, you know, a slippery field. So, number 31 for the Beavers, ready to kick it off. That is... Uh, Charlie Harmon, and boom, we're underway. Squib kick, and it's fielded cleanly. Cuts to the right, cuts to the left. Maybe, may, turns it up, field it, turns the corner. And he gets some positive yardage out of that. That's number 22, Tony Lewis on the return. <clears throat> See where they mark the ball here. Looks like they're gonna mark it on the 36 or 37 yard line. So uh, not bad field position for the Flying Dutchman to start with here. So Couturier's back at quarterback, 25, of course, is, uh, is uh, Dornish. He's the running back. He gets the workload. Out at wide receiver, we have Charlie Couturier, the near side. And, uh, again, at the far side of the field, it's always difficult to make the numbers out. Number nine would be uh, Colin Reitz. <clears throat> so we're set for the snap and it's a clean snap handed off to Dornish and he's brought down immediately in fact he'll lose about two yards on the play so second and 13 the ball's back to the 37 yard line Again, it was interesting to see how evenly matched these teams played each other as far as mixing the run and the pass. There were some great passes and great catches on both sides and some nice defensive plays in the defensive backfield. Couture takes the snap, the running back directly to his left. He's back to pass, and it's a long pass down the field for the other Couture. It's just out of his reach, just out of a reach. So 14 to number 11. That was a nice try, but uh, that would have been a hookup for more than 40 yards if it had worked. So it's third and 13, ball on a 34-yard line. What will they do on third down? They have to make at least the 47, yeah, call it the 47-yard line for a first down. And the ball is on the 34. So they're set. There's the snap, and he's going to pass again. He's flushed to the right, rolls to his right. He throws downfield on a strong arm, and that ball is caught. That's a first down. Beautiful. First down to Carter Kadzi. They flushed him to the right. Kadzi streaking down the far sideline. He pulls it in. 
He pulls it in. The ball is on the 38-yard line, and we are now in Beaver territory. Could the Beaver Dam be ready to break? Three receivers left, one flanker to the right. It's a pass play, but it's a flare pass to the running back. He, oh, he's brought down at the 45-yard line, so he'll lose a decent chunk of yardage there. Dornish took the pass, a little screen pass, nice catch, but he just couldn't get out of the reach of the defense. So now it's uh, on the 45-yard line. <clears throat> Second and 17 to go. Line to gain would be the 28 yard line. Four receivers, four receivers set, one running back. They fake to the back. Couture has time. He comes up out of the oh, ball. He he's off the ball. ball. And he's on it. He's on the ball. But St. Mary's going backwards. They're on the other side of the 50 right now at the uh, 40, 48 yard line. So a little hard luck here in the first series. They did manage one first down. But again, it's a third and 25 and anything can happen. For four receiver sets, you got a running back. You got a safety peeling back, so there's a guy playing center field for the Beavers. And again, the pass was a nice throw, but just out of reach. Just out of reach of uh, Charlie Couture. Just out of reach. So that's a fourth down. Ball's on the 48. And they'll punt the ball back and see what the Beavers can do here with their first attempt in the second half. 7-6, Dubois leads. 9.26 to play in the second, uh, the third quarter. They're in punt formation. There's the snap, a good snap. The punt, it's a high punt. And it takes a bounce. Rolls dead at the 24-yard uh, line. So the Beavers take over at their own 24-yard line, first and 10. And again, we'll see what they do with their first half. These teams were very evenly matched in the first half. A lot of exciting football played here tonight by both sides of the football. Okay, four receiver, uh, three receivers set. You got a, a, an H back just playing off the line. Man in motion goes into the line, but it does no good. Running back gets nowhere. He, in fact, will probably lose a yard at least. That was uh, Dalton Yale who ran into the line. <clears throat> so it's uh, second and 11. Ball's on the 23-yard line. They're going again with a four-receiver set. H-back just off the line. One setback. He's back to pass all the way. Throws it to the left, and again, that's uh, that's well defended. Smelled out, and he gets back to maybe the 20-yard line. 20, 21-yard line. So again, the Beavers suffering the same thing that St. Mary's did with their first attempt. They're going backwards. 13 and three. Balls on the 21. 8:14 to go. Second, uh, third quarter. Second half, third quarter. I'll be all right. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a bunch receiver to the right, and that's where he's fading to the right. Crosses the middle, and oh, just out of the reach. It was a nice pass, and that pass was set to go to uh, Derek Burkert. Just out of his reach, and that means it's fourth down, and it's time to punt the ball back to the Flying Dutchman. So no first down. For the first attempt in the second half. Here's the punt. 
It's a good punt. And it's fielded cleanly at the 42-yard line. And here we go. There he goes. Goes up the right, left side. Did he step out of bounds? Is he in the score? Oh! Great run back. Logan Moser cut around the left side. Scurried up the sideline as quick as a cat. Cut it back inside and was brought down at about the five-yard line. I don't believe he stepped out of bounds before getting there. It was close, but he's up to the five-yard line. We got somebody down on the field. Could be a cramp the way they're they're working on it. Remember last game, it was so humid, everybody was cramping. Everybody up. was cramping. We up. haven't seen that yet tonight here. It's 57 degrees right now. It's a beautiful night. But uh, by the time the second second half rolls around, you got to hydrate. <clears throat> and you can get some cramps. I'll tell you what, Jim. We'll go to a commercial real quick, and we'll be back. Sounds good. At Art Heery & Sons Furniture on Art Street in St. Mary's, we are your headquarters for quality name brand furniture for the entire home. Check out our complete selection of Serta bedding, available in all comfort levels. A full line of flooring, too. Since 1955, Art Heery & Sons Furniture has offered the same great customer service and quality products that keep you coming back. Be sure to visit us on Facebook. Art Heery and Sons Furniture, the furniture store for people. We're back. Well, Logan Moser was the injured player. He's back up and walking off under his own power. He had at least a 50-yard uh, punt return there. Down to the six-yard line. First, first and goal from the six at St. Mary's. Couture throws it, and it's caught. It's a fight, but, oh, it's brought down to the by the one-yard line by the looks of things. And who caught that pass? Chadzi, number 17, Carter Chadzi. And it signaled a touchdown. All right, they gave it to him. The referees conversed a little bit, thought about it, and it's a touchdown. All right. Score is 12 to 7. St. Mary's takes the first lead of the night for the Flying Dutchman. And are they going to go for two? Maybe make it a little more difficult on the Dubois team. It looks like they are. Ball's on the two yard line. There's the snap to uh, Coudre. The pass. It's caught. It's caught. It's a two point conversion. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Two point conversion by uh, Tony Lewis. As the cheerleaders have gotten a little bit bigger out here now, the little ones have gone up into the stands and the regular cheerleaders are, are out to cheer on the St. Mary's Dutch. And of course, these young ladies work very hard, Jim, as does the band and the parents and so many people that make this a, uh, you know, make this whole, this whole process. It really does take a village. It's a great presentation. It really is. The band was wonderful. I've never seen four xylophones and an electric keyboard in a band. I think that's fantastic. Maybe I live a sheltered life, but that really impressed me. <laughs> that was fantastic. So the score now, Flying Dutch take the lead 14-7 with 7.05 left in the second, third quarter. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> third quarter. I've had a forced Gump kind of day. I'm not a smart man. <laughs> and that's all I got to say about that. That's all I got to say about that. So, Dubois trailing for the first time tonight are back to receive the punt or the kick. The kickoff comes to the 40-yard line. <clears throat> Kudre will kick it off, and he'll take the field to hand it off or pass it. There's the lineup. Boom, there's the kick, and it's a squib kick down the middle. It's fielded by one of the upbacks. 
And he makes positive yardage. Goes about 10, 15 yards. Forced out of bounds at about the 46, 40, 47 yard line. And that was Adam uh, Braxton Adams. Braxton Adams on the punt return. And they get a uh, pretty decent field position out of that deal. Just on their side of the 50. They're marking it at the 46 yard line. So they move the sticks. It'll be first and 10 from the 46, and we'll see what uh, the Dubois Beavers have in the tank. <clears throat> Fumble. No, uh, incomplete. I think the, pat, the pass yeah, was the just ball was uh, tipped. tipped at the line. No harm done. They'll just move it to uh, another down. <clears throat> Several times tonight that ball's been tipped, Jim, yeah. and uh, could have been. <laughs> there are some tall people playing on, on uh, St. Mary's team. Some of the defensive backs are over six feet tall. I think they move some of those taller guys up at linebacker when they expect to pass. Four wide receivers set for the Beavers. One running back. There's the snap. Out of the shotgun as usual. And again, tipped again. the pass is tipped. But it looked like it was caught by... Uh, but was he in bounds when he caught it? Ball was caught by uh, Derek Burkett. Could have easily been an interception. Yeah, I think they gave him a yardage. It's out to the 40... 46. <clears throat> Third and 12, 46 yard line. <clears throat> There's the snap. He rolls to his right, throws a pass out to the flat, and just in and out of the hands of Cameron Hayes. Just in and out of his hands. So it's fourth and 12 right now, and uh, on to punt is uh, Grayson Dinkfeld. You got two back for St. Mary's, and the punt goes. Nice punt, but it's muffed. He gets on it. Just dropped the punt, but he's back on the ball, so no harm done there. Looks like the ball will be placed at the 20-yard line or thereabouts. 6.28 to go in the third quarter. Fourteen seven, our score. Back at the seven-minute mark, St. Mary's took the lead. Long punt return and a six-yard pass and, and a two-point conversion done perfectly. We have the lead now here in St. Mary's. About halfway through the third quarter. <clears throat> and Kuderay back to take the shotgun snap. Four receivers, two right, two left, one lone setback. Clock hasn't started yet. The play clock or the game clock. The referee's still making some decisions here, and he runs into his position. And now we're set. There's the whistle. We've got a man in motion. The outside flanker crosses. He's used as a blocker, and they throw the ball out to Chadzi. I mean, Chatsy blocked and uh, Coudere took off the pass, but uh, still didn't get much yardage on it, if anything at all. Still ball on the 20-yard line. Second and 10 for the 20. There's the snap. Looking downfield, he throws out into the flat to the running back. 
Jukes one tackle, but he's taken down at about the 25-yard uh, line. Dalton Yale brings him down. The running back was uh, Justin Dornish. He's been getting a load of work tonight. He's got to be closing in on about 50, 60 yards. Now, Paul, we don't have a statistician to work with to help us get the yardage or spot, so we're pretty much on our own. Nice pass play. goes out to number nine, and that's uh, Colin Reitz. Colin Reitz pulls the pass in. And that will move the chains. That's a first down. Nice first down. <clears throat> 504 left here in the third quarter. Just a little bit of a crescent moon up there, Jim. Yeah, buddy. Ball is on the 35 yard line under this beautiful night. Four receiver set, actually a five receiver set. There's three bunch tall right, but he fakes to the left side and hands off to the running back and not much there up the middle. Fake out the uh, cameraman a little bit. Justin Dornish, I believe, was on the carry. It's hard to make a 25 or 26 out on these jerseys. I believe it's 25. <clears throat> okay, we got... We got uh, three wide to the left now. The heavy side, and that's the direction Kudere's going. Pulls the guy across the middle, a crossing pattern, and he's out of bounds at about the 49-yard line. So positive yardage on that little crossing play. Caught by Colin Reitz. First and 10. There's another first down. Second first down of this drive. <clears throat> So here we go again here with the 355 left in, in the third. Three receivers right, and he hands it off up to the middle, and a nice chunk of yardage. Nice chunk of yardage by uh, uh, Justin Dornish. Nice chunk of yardage. Another first down. So it's uh, first down, ball's on the 42-yard line. No, second down, one yard to go, 42-yard line, pardon me. Couture sidesteps the defensive rush. Was that caught or was that a, a trap? I don't think he caught it. I don't him. think so, we won't move the sticks. Nice attempt, <clears throat> very nice attempt on that ball, but it hit the ground. Uh, there was a flag on the play too, so they're marching back negative yardage here. Ball goes way back across the midfield stripe to the, uh, the 44 yard line here. Man. Second and 15. To gain a first down, they have to get out to the 41-yard uh, the line. Let's call it the 41. 15 yards. But they're capable. There's a short pass out to the left. Couture to Couture. He gets back about five. Five or six. <clears throat> Two fifty three left in the third. It's third and eight. That's manageable. Balls on the forty nine yard line. 
and see what kind of play they pull out of their pockets for this one. Four receivers on the field, lone setback. Shotgun snap, fakes to the running back. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. He's got it. He's reversing field, and he just throws it to Couture, but there is a flag on the play, and when a play takes that long to develop, chances are it's holding. But he was a magician getting out of the grass with the defense, and he pitched it out to Couture, who he took the ball up to the 48-yard uh, line, but it looks like it's all for naught. A little Pensu held. Let's see where they march things to here. Well, they're walking it off in favor of St. Mary's. That will give them a first down, I yes, believe, it will. Jim. Yep, that's a first down. They're moving the chains. 2.26 to go in quarter number three. And St. Mary's really got a gift on that one. Couture to Couture, and uh, he was just a magician getting out of the grasp of the defense. Yeah, I thought they had him. <laughs> Whole lot of holding going on. Okay, we're set with a fresh set of downs, 39-yard line. We are in Beaver territory. There's the snap, hand to the running back. He cuts around the end, and he makes positive yardage. He had one man to beat there, yeah. Jim. Justin Dornich had one man to beat. And again, he's out near a first down. Looks like he may have another yard or two to get the first down, but he was, uh, he was on the move. Ball's on the 32. It's second and three with 151 to play in the quarter. <clears throat> ball boys talking. The referee trying to get him to take a fresh ball there. Oh, a nice little... Used to be called that the Statue of Liberty play. <laughs> Something like that. You know, Jim, we do our best to bring, you know, get this on film for everybody, but, you know, it's really to be here. You know, to see the, the oh, atmosphere yeah. and the, the whole bit, you feel a little bit of a breeze and you see the flag and the, and the whole nine yards. It's, it's really a really unique experience. Well, they're going to march it back against St. Mary, so we lose yardage on the play. Penalty yardage. So let's see. The ball is now back on the 45-yard line. And to gain a first down, we have to make it to the 30, so... Chris, the only problem with being live at a game like this is I can't go to the refrigerator every five. No, hours. you can't. Maybe we should bring one. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 15, 45 yard line, 127 to go on the clock in the third. Nice little pass to the running back, and again, he, he's stacked, he's stacked up. Stacked up. Two evenly matched, evenly played teams here. Both teams had some big plays, and you know both teams had some costly penalties. Ball's on the 47-yard line, third and 17. St. Mary's lead, 14 to uh, seven, took the lead at the uh, seven-minute mark of the third quarter. And they blow it dead. So timeout, 39 seconds to go in the third. And uh, both teams head to their respective sidelines. Talk things over, get a drink, and uh, we'll take a break. We'll take a break. Serving our area since 1934, Cotters has gained the trust of numerous friends in St. Mary's, Kersey, Johnsonburg, Ridgeway, Kane, Brockway, and Emporium. Our sales staff is here to help you find your next SUV, car, or truck. 
will help walk you through the process with no pressure, no haggling. Cotter's Service Department has over 90 years of combined service experience. Cotter's, locally owned and operated since 1934. And we're back here after a commercial by our good friends down at Cotter's Oldsmobile. Say hello to Jody and Dan down there and maybe pick up a new good used vehicle or get some great quality service. Jim, what a nice night. What a great game here. Very close, very well matched. Yes, it is. It's amazing how uh, well these teams have played each other. We have great sponsors, a great night for football. I'm just so happy to be a part of this. This is, this is what sports is all about. St. Mary's back to pass. Kudre goes, oh, over the middle. He's he close to a first down. Will they give it to him? He's at the 30. Maybe the, oh, man, maybe the 31-yard line is where they're placing it, and that's short. So they were at a third and 17 on the 47. Now it's fourth and one. St. Mary's with a nice, nice play. They're in a position to go for it here. I think that's what they're going to do. But certainly, I don't think they're going to punt yeah. it where they're at. Looks like another timeout. Oh, it's the end of the quarter. If they they convert here, that'll be their fifth first down. And that's saying something because they lost probably. <laughs> 20, 25 yards on penalties this drive. But yeah, they, they've gone back and forth, back and forth. They're amazingly resilient. You know, a nice crowd on hand here tonight. And you know, our, our sponsors uh, make this all happen. Art Heary and Sons, uh, Catalyst, Zito Media, Cotter's Oldsmobile, Laurel Eye. Uh, they got offices all over, including in downtown St. Mary's. St. Mary's Auto Body, Straub Insurance, Keystone Audiology, St. Mary's Insurance. Folks, they, they make this possible. And, you know, and I, I go visit these folks, Jim, to, to work with them on their marketing and stuff. And, it, you know, it's such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure to work with these folks all the time. You know, when you think about some of the things the things that they do on a, on a community basis, not just this, but so many things that they do. I know Straub Insurance, you know, they donate. St. Mary's Insurance, they donate. They donate till it hurts. St. Mary's Auto Body, they got that concert series when it's always possible, you know. They're, and, and they don't make money, they're donating it back. Yeah, that's, what you, um, that's why I moved here. Plain and simply, the people. The yeah, attitudes. It, that's yeah. and you won't get a bigger smile than and Jen out at Keystone Audiology. It just uh, <laughs> she checked my ears and she said, "You've lost just about that portion of your hearing that would be equivalent to what your wife's voice." <laughs> <laughs> what you say, honey? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> they left the quarter run out, so we are down to the fourth quarter now. Twelve minutes to go in this ball game. Fourteen seven. It's a tight one. It's a stem winder. 14-7 could be anybody's ball game here. Who wants to really knuckle down on defense, make the fewest mistakes, and really take the ball down the field on a, a time-consuming drive? Well, this is it. We got 12 minutes to go, folks. We got three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Couture didn't like what he saw. He saw something. Now he's walking over to the sidelines. He might be changing the play. Well, you better hurry up because the clock is winding. Clock's down to eight seconds. And here's the snap. He's back to pass. He throws it hard and wide. Oh, just through the hands. Just through the hands of Logan Moser. He's been making some noise all night with a great kick return. A couple of long pass receptions just yeah, I, through his hands. You know, Jim, I got to tell you, as a spectator, I love to watch a good passing game. As a cameraman, I love a run. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so much easier. So much easier. I try, folks. I'll tell you, trying to catch these corners down here can be very difficult. Do not want the cameras to end up in the crowd. That would be <laughs> disastrous. Yeah, I got one hand on the, on the tripod and one hand on the lever of the camera. So if all of a sudden the camera takes a dive, Okay, you here know we go why. again. Ball is on the 31 yard line. And it goes nowhere. So they take over, took over on downs here. The Beavers have the ball. 
this game is going to come down to maybe, just maybe, who has the ball last, who can get it close to the end zone. Okay, there we go. And it's a run play. He gets stacked up. He may have gained three or four yards on the play. Ball's on the 35-yard line. And the Beavers at third and six. They got to make the 41-yard line to gain a first down. 10.50 to go. The clock is running in the fourth quarter. Austin's back to pass. Flips it right to the running back, and it's it's just a, a dropped pass in the backfield. So, I don't think they're going to go for it here because they're fairly deep into St. Mary's territory. In their own territory, rather. But, uh, yeah, the punter's coming on. Their punter is Bryson uh, Beautiful Bielfeldt. punt. And it rolls out of bounds. Oh, nice field position. Rolls out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So St. Mary's takes over. And they could have a longer field, but that's not a bad punt. This could be the time-consuming mm -hmm. that they need. Get a couple first downs, take some major time off that clock. Yeah, the Beavers have yet to get a first down since the end of the half. St. Mary's has been moving the football, but uh, they've suffered some penalty yardage, too. So, Couture back to pass. But familiar set with receivers left and right, four on the field. There's the snap. He fakes to the back, rolls to the right, cuts back to the line, and he gets nowhere. Maybe a yard. No, he, no, he doesn't. He's, what am I thinking? And he lost, lost six yards on that play. That's not a way to consume the clock. No. But again, we've seen some long first downs made here tonight. It's second and 16. 32-yard line is the ball, and you got to make the 48 for a first down. That's second down. Man in motion coming from the left side. There's the snap. And again, nothing. The Beavers' defensive line has been stellar here. So the ball is on the 29-yard line. Again, St. Mary's needs to make the 48. Third so, and 19. It's a long one to go. Here's It's a passing down, obviously, and he's got all the time in the world back there. He's flushed out to the right, throws, and the ball just off the fingertips. Just off the fingertips of Tony Lewis. He's made some pretty nice plays tonight in his own right. So, 14-7, St. Mary's leads Dubois, and the Beavers are about to get the ball back. Derek Burkert and uh, Garrett Franz are back. They're standing at their own 40-yard line to take the punt. There's the snap. Nice punt. Goes off to the right, fielded cleanly, breaks the 50, the 45, the 40, the 35-yard line. So, 20-yard punt return at least there, and uh, the Beavers take over in really good field position now. They need to put together a drive, a couple of first downs, and stay away from the penalties. Eight fifty-six to go. First and ten from the thirty-five yard line. Off 
Austin Mitchell still a quarterback. And that goes through a couple of yards. Looks like they have the ball marked on the 26 yard line. Second and two to go. Ball's on the 27, 27 yard line. Second and two. Clock's running, 8.30 to play. Austin Mitchell in at quarterback. Got four receivers, two in the slot, two wide, and he keeps it. And he goes for the first down. What looks to be a first down. Looks like he crossed the, uh, the 25 to 24 yard line. And that gives them their first first down. So they reset the chains with 8.06 to go. The clock is running. They punch it in here and go for two. They can take the lead. Full backfield. Hands off up the middle. And a nice bit of yard. It looks like another first down. And Dubois all of a sudden is running the ball and running it well. Yeah, that was Austin Henry on the carry, and he moved the ball all the way up to the first down marker and beyond. So the ball was on the 24. It's down to the 15-yard line, and that is... It didn't give him the first down. It, yeah, no. They, they needed a yard yet, second and one. And he got it. Yes, he did. So it's a first and ten. And uh, Dubois is really threatening now. The first time they've really threatened in the first, second half. They're inside the red zone. First and ten from the 14-yard line. One flanker split out far left. You've got a slot and a flanker to the right. Two running backs in the game. Oh, it's a fumble, but he picks it up. Oh, that was, uh, that was a hard stopper if you're a Beavers fan. <laughs> Austin Mitchell picked up the football after he fumbled the snap and dove toward the line. So at second and 11, he loses one. Six twenty-two. The clock's rolling. They're set. One running back. One guy motion to the line, and they're keeping it on the ground. They're keeping it on the ground, and right now St. Mary's is uh, is really becoming a little stout on defense to stop the run game. So third down. Good defensive game, Jim. Yep, it is. Third down. They still have the ball marked on the. Uh, 14. They're in four down territory here with the clock running at 543. There's the snap. He He's fades back. back to pass. He has all day back there. He's looking deep in the end zone. Picked off. It is picked off. That's twice tonight. St. Mary's may have just saved the game. Bush is 530 to go. But they picked it off. Who was that? Uh, it's one happy St. Mary's team, though. Yep. And again, we are trying to figure out the numbers here because we're at the, when you get into the end zone, it's very faint to see. I think it was uh, Braden Osti. If it's number 23, it was Braden Osti. They always say the mind is the first thing you know when you get old. It's not. It's the no, eyes. It's the eyes. Okay, St. Mary's back to pass. They're not playing coy. They're going deep, just oh, oh just all over the fingertips of uh, of Carter Katzi. He was out by the 50-yard line and just glanced off his fingertips, went out of bounds. That was a heart stopper there. Oh. 
mercy. <laughs> Another pass play over the middle, and he has Kadzi at the 25-yard line. Kadzi breaks free. He's down to the 40. Oh, oh yeah. just an ankle tackle. An ankle tackle. Carter Chadzi, nice catch over the middle. Yeah, and he's he's fine to his knee. He's kind of he's banged down. up. He was uh, he was uh, on the ground earlier. He and knew they were stretching him out. He knew as soon as he hit the ground. You know, yep. Jim, I gotta wonder. He didn't look like he was hit. He looked like he had that man beat. I wonder if he didn't tear something if he just up. Didn't hurt. Pull if, something. Yeah. Yeah, because. He had him beat. I don't think the other guy from behind him was on him. Where's our instant replay? <laughs> Maybe that's coming. You never know. <laughs> Maybe that's coming. Down the road. <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, he, that was kind of an interesting thing there because like I said, he had him beat and he made the turn. And as soon as he went down, he was pointing to his, yeah. he was pointing to his knee. Still 14-7. St. Mary's hangs on to the lead. 5-14 to go in the game. Helping him up. He's limping off. He's jumping off right. under his own power, though. That's good. He's putting weight on it. but yeah, He's off the field. He played a great game tonight. He played a great game tonight. Yeah, I he think and he, Moser. and uh, I think he's done for tonight. It was hard he, to pick a player of the game because uh, there were several on offense. Logan Moser, that just punt return, and that pass play he made. Just over five minutes left in the game, winding clock. Yep, we just passed the five-minute mark. Here's the snap, and it's a handoff, and it goes nowhere. And I think now St. Mary's area needs to chew up some clock. Yeah. Need a couple first downs here. 4.43 to go, 42-41. That pick in the end zone was the death that sentence was, for Dubois. That was stellar. That's twice they did that tonight. They had one in the first half. Play clock down to nine seconds. They better get to it or you'll be penalized here. They're down. There's the center set with the ball. Snap it. There, just two seconds to go. That was a close one. But there's a pass play. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage, which was about the 40-yard line. So it's third and ten. Third and ten, St. Mary's needs a... A big strike, but uh, Dubois take a timeout. Dubois takes a timeout with 3.59 left in the game. So will we. Throughout West Central Pennsylvania, people are losing their glasses. Well, they haven't really lost them. They just don't need them anymore. Thanks to the amazing LASIK surgeons at Laurel Eye Clinic. Using state-of-the-art bladeless LASIK technology, these board-certified surgeons offer better vision for you and your family. With 10 convenient locations, there's bound to be one nearby. Isn't it time that you lost your glasses? Call Laurel Eye Clinic or visit laureleye.com and schedule your free consultation. Okay, we're back, folks. We just missed, uh, we had an incomplete pass after that timeout. So now it is fourth and 10 with 352. So the punting unit for St. Mary's area is coming on. St. Mary's has to get a decent punt off, hold them back into their own end and just play very, very good defense because there's plenty of time for Dubois to put points on the board. 352 left in the game. And if you don't believe that, ask the Dallas Cowboys after last night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tom Brady does it again, 44 years old, and he's amazing. 
There's the snap, the punt. And the punt drops down to the 40-yard line, takes a nice roll. Beautiful roll. Rolls dead at the 26-yard line. 26-yard line. So the Dubois Beavers have a long field ahead of them with 343 on the clock. They're trailing 14 to 7. Now we need the defense to come up big. Three forty three left, three forty two, the clock's rolling, and here we go. Long pass, long pass broken up. Almost picked off, but broken up by uh, Logan Moser. He's been everywhere tonight. Nice, nice pass defense, because he was up, he was, he had him. So it's second and 10, balls on the 26 yard line, no game. Got to have one of your safeties back playing center field. Man in motion for Dubois. Quarterback's back to throw again. Throws it short into the line, and well. He's got a lane. He's got a lane. He's, got a lane. he's caught at the 40, 38 yard line. So, what you didn't want to have happen just happened. A nice long pass play that goes for about 35 yards. 321 to go. First and 10. And they mark the ball on the uh, 37 yard line. First and 10 from the St. Mary's 37. Two slot receivers, two wide receivers, one running back, slot receiver in motion. He's going into the line. He stops. Oh, and a bad, bad snap fumble. But he makes something out of it. And they're back to the 40-yard line. Yeah, almost back to the original line of scrimmage. The snap out of his hands over his head, but he had the composure to go back and get it. That and, ball uh, went from the 40 down, back to the 40, and back up to the 40. Yeah, that was, uh, of course, Austin Mitchell's their quarterback. A lot of composure there. He, that could have been a, that could have been it. Yeah, yeah. They wound up at second and eleven. They got, they got yeah, that a break. Second and a city block. There's the snap, and it's picked. St. Mary's picks it again. Beautiful. St. Mary's picks the ball off, brings it down to the 45-yard line, and. Excitement on the sidelines, folks. Yep. Yes, sir. There is spirit here. Way to go. St. Mary's Saint area. Mary's again. Carter Chadsey picks it off. A beautiful pickoff. And again, barring something uh, fantastic happening, it's uh, 2.11 to go, 14 Seven, St. Mary's has the ball back. And they're going to play a conservative. There's a run play. There's a flag. There he goes. The play, but he goes out to the other 40 yard line. Do have a flag, though. Yep. <laughs> Justin Dornish, a nice gain on a run play, but there's a flag. Yeah, they're calling a hold. And. Oh. oh, that's a heartbreak. Can't do that. That's a heartbreak. 2.03 to go. They march it back. Put the ball on the 34-yard line. So it's first and 10 from the 34-yard line. They got to get out to the... Uh, it's first and 20. Four, I wondered about first that. First and 20, yeah. You got to get out to the... Got to get out to the 46-yard line, cross the 50, 46 to get a first down here. Well, they it's have to pass. put themselves in a passing situation. And there's a pass play. They bring it back to about the 41-yard line. 
You know, Jim, while we're waiting for them to reset here, uh, last time we were on, we, uh, we mentioned it, Dr. Brian Toth has retired as the superintendent of the school district. Our congratulations and best wishes to him. Absolutely. And, of course, good luck to our own our Harley Ramsey, the new superintendent. He's, uh, he's got some work ahead of him. But, you know, as we take a time out here, Dr. Toth, one of the things that he did for this school district is he really built the spirit of not only of the students, but of the whole community around this school. He did. He was so, so community responsive. And our best wishes in his retirement, not only a great uh, superintendent, but a super friend to this whole community and a personal friend. But we wish Dr. Ramsey the best of luck. We hope he's listening or probably here somewhere in the stands watching Watching this, of course, he served as assistant superintendent under Dr. Toth, and I'm sure he is going to be absolutely tremendous. Looking forward, I'm going to be meeting with him this week for a glimpse into the school district. Well, it's a second and 13. Ball's on the 41. 137 to go, and still... You Very know, it's, manageable. It's not out of reach it's for Dubois. This game could go either way with 137 if left. St. Mary's needs another first down. They that would about seal clock. it. So it's a pass play. He'll be handed it off to the running back up the middle. There he's he goes. Got the first down, and he's brought down at the 40-yard line. And I don't see any hankies on the field. That might be it. That might be it. Justin Dornish took the handoff, and he yes, broke up sir. field. So running clock, and of course St. Mary's area wants to chew up over whatever they can. Yeah. They're up 14 to seven, first and 10, with just over a minute to go. Cheerleaders get the crowd fired up. Now they're gonna take a timeout. 113 on the clock, 14-7, the Flying Dutch. They just converted a big first down. They were looking at a First and 20, they came back with a running play, just caught the Dubois uh, Beavers off balance. That went for a first down, moved the sticks. The ball is on the 40 yard line. So they're talking it over here. One thirteen left in this game, unless something drastic happens. And I think you'll see St. Mary's area chew up the clock here and finish this off. But you never know. Kudere, Moser, uh, Dornish out there, the good hands team. Hey, take a knee. <laughs> So they take the victory formation, they'll have to do it again and again. And then uh, we're at the one minute mark, second and 10, balls on the 40. And the good hands team back there. Using up that clock, finishing this off. St. Mary's area will go two and one. And they beat a tough, respectable team tonight, yes, Jim. Did. Both teams were very evenly matched, very evenly matched. There were long runs, there were long passing gains. Both teams played some pretty good punt return and punt coverage. And the Dubois, the Dubois Beavers had a and that's it. Diffed bad breaks. That's it. The that is gonna, gonna that down. is gonna wrap it up. And you know, folks, we're, we appreciate all of you listening and watching. We appreciate all of our sponsors. For Jim Burton and Jeff Buhite, this one is in the bag for St. Mary's area. Till next week, check it out, Jim. Everybody, 14 to seven, the Flying Dutchman over the Beavers of Dubois. Have a wonderful Friday night. Celebrate safely. Good night. Good night, folks.